Hello, my name is Adriana Bankston. I'm a principal legislative analyst with the University of California system in DC. And today I'll be speaking to you in my personal capacity. So I'm a former Ben scientist. I transitioned into science policy through a number of volunteering opportunities and ultimately a fellowship at the Society for Neuroscience that helped me transition into the field uh, in 2019 or so. Going back, uh, you know, I grew up in academia and science my whole life. My parents are both faculty. My grandfather was a physician. He left medicine to become a scientist. Uh, my grandmother is still a scientist. And so I have multiple generations of research and science. And over time, uh, you know, that really made me uh, want to pursue research. And I was sort of predestined, I suppose. I pursued a bachelor's in science from Clemson University and then a PhD in biochemistry cell and development of biology from Emory University. And during this time, I was really still set on an academic career and looking to become faculty. And it wasn't until I was a postdoc when I thought about how else can I use my degree? What else can I be doing with my research? And decided to explore other career options. As it happens, I ended up being at University of Louisville for my postdoc uh, in Kentucky, not a whole lot going on in that part of the country. And um, there I really explored my, own, my options. Um, not having a lot of resources, I essentially created my own resource, uh, which was a career research advancement craft, uh, focused training seminar that brought speakers to talk with postdocs about careers. And through that, I learned about career options that I might be interested in and the ones I might not. But more than that, it really brought this idea of training into my mind that I could be working on helping train the next generation of scientists and how students and postdocs really needed um, that sort of background and training to be able to figure out where they wanted to go career-wise. So with that, I became really interested in training and wanting to go a career that uh, would help create these sorts of workshops for trainees. I organized a local symposium um, and sort of higher, higher uh, level events across different states and realized that there was room to connect researchers through Kentucky and other neighboring states. But really, I was developing a larger interest in training uh, the next generation as part of this. So I got involved with organizations that worked in training at the national level, had some leadership positions, and really, I think, made a, a name for myself in a sense, um, at least a little bit in the training side of things. Um, however, at the same time, I started delving a little bit deeply into policy when I was in Kentucky through the Kentucky Academy of Sciences, who created an award for science outreach. And I was really starting to become interested in this connection between science and society. And uh, at this time, uh, so I ended up leaving my postdoc in 2016 um, through a very amicable departure with my PI. Um, but that really freed me to explore what I really wanted. And I was at this intersection of being interested in training, but also um, looking to potentially advance policy interests. So it just so happened in 2016, there was this nonprofit called Future of Research, which advocates for trainees. And they were doing a study looking at the effects of a federal labor law on postdoc salaries, um, as the law mandated that uh, salaries would increase um, across the US, U.S. institutions. And so we decided to, to look at what that looked like if universities would comply and published another paper looking at um, the salaries across the United States universities as we could obtain them uh, and publish that paper. So that really opened up um, a whole new avenue for me um, to connect really federal policy to a university and realizing that that could be a career path and policy could be a way for me to impact trainees um, from a higher level and potentially impact a higher number of trainees um, than if I was just working for one university. 
So I pursued this interest in policy through a number of organizations, uh, both locally and nationally uh, chapters, um, as well as national organizations. So that really helped with understanding how the science policy landscape works, doing some networking and meeting people who are in different areas and looking at what they were working on and starting to realize that maybe this might be a path for me. So as I mentioned uh, in 2019, I was lucky enough to be awarded this fellowship with the Society for Neuroscience, which is a policy and advocacy fellowship. And you learn how to write policy documents, do actually advocacy on Capitol Hill and um, advocate for neuroscience funding. So we organized the Capitol Hill Day. And I was able to contribute to some of the training opportunities um, through the ECPA program, the Early Career Policy Ambassadors, which they have, and um, a number of other really basic policy skills, um, you know, watching briefings and hearings, and understanding how the legislative process works, which is complicated, but it was a, a, a bit of a dipping your toe in the water. So during the fellowship, I also helped write testimony for the SFN president, which is what they would testify in Congress, again, for increased funding for research and neuroscience funding. And um, really, you know, got my, my toe dipped a little bit in policy and really liked it. Uh, after that, um, in 2019, I was again lucky enough to have this position that I have now with the University of California Federal Government Relations, where we advocate for the university with Congress, the administration, and federal agencies. And it is really um, motivating, again, to be on this other side where I get to help um, connect researchers with policymakers. There's also been some discussions about the workforce pipeline and the future of science as related to uh, how the pandemic has impacted graduate students, for example. And so we organized some events um, to actually one, uh, one uh, panel to bring trainees to speak with health staff, uh, which is really nice. And have also worked on a number of other projects uh, relating to bringing early career scientists into policy and advocacy or um, advocating or using sort of their perspectives as a tool for advocacy for the university. In addition, um, I am very, again, I have maintained this interest in training. Um, I have helped with a um, course that the Journal of Science Policy and Governance is partnered on. And this is an international open access and peer reviewed journal that publishes work um, from early career scholars. And again, um, we have a number of events that help their professional development. And um, it's also very motivating to maintain this sort of training side of things and now have transitioned into training um, students and postdocs in science policy, which seems to be my, my expertise now. Um, in addition to advocating for research and the future of research um, in my job, and outside again with other organizations. So really have always had a lot of uh, a lot of interest and a lot of activities which complement each other and now really have focused on to looking at the future science workforce development in terms of the, the future workforce, what that looks like really in a broader scale, again, for the EC system, but also nationally uh, across the United States and more internationally, which of course there's um, a number of questions there, but one thing to look at is um, how we can maintain the United States competitive in research and um, still still be collaborative internationally. And so I've been really lucky to work on issues that I'm interested in uh, and really enjoy what I'm currently doing. Um, future, what the future holds is uh, unknown at the moment. Um, uh, we'll see. And I think I wanted to share also a few skills uh, that you need in science policy that, uh, you know, questions that were posed about this is um, what kind of qualities you need to be in policy. I think you need to be able to be used to a fast-paced environment, um, prioritize projects and be able to juggle projects and shift from one to another. Uh, it is very much in real time. I think you get to really, um, look at 
uh, how you might be able to impact policy in, in real time um, by responding to something that um, an agency is looking for or um, being part of legislation uh, at, the, at the federal level as well. So hopefully that gives you an idea of um, sort of my interests and my path. I'm happy to talk more. Uh, feel free to reach out to me as well um, if you'd like to chat more about the path. Thank you.